Hi, my name is Norman Fastenberg. I'm an ex-Army uh, Reserve person. I served a long time ago. Uh, your parents might remember when John Kennedy was president and I was in basic training in New Jersey, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis. And we thought there was going to be a war with Russia, but it didn't happen because the Russians backed down and uh, we were safe. Anyway, I served from 1962 to 1968. I got my discharge and I consider myself somewhat of a veteran, although I didn't fight in any wars, but I was lucky, I guess. Okay, I'm going to read you a story. It's called More Bears, and I hope you enjoy it. I might have to show you a picture if something I'm reading seems appropriate for me to show you the picture. Anyway, the person who wrote this book, he's called the author. Um, he started to think about what he wanted to write and he said, what? Who said that? Because he heard somebody say more bears and he didn't know where that voice was coming from. The author of the story looked around the room wondering where those voices had come from. Were those the voices of children shouting? Then he went back to writing, and this is a picture of him thinking, and on top he heard the sound, more bears. As I was saying, this story has absolutely no bears at all. The author was very certain of this. And then he heard it again, more bears. And it was on top, and he heard the same sound. The author tried very, very hard to ignore the children who thought that the story ought to have Guess what, kids? More bears. Fine, this story had a bear. It was a cute little baby bear strolling through the book looking for, here's the baby bear. Oh God, more bears. The baby was looking for more bears. Now hold on a second. The author of this story knew exactly how many bears it should have, and the author insisted it should only be what do you think? He only wanted one bear, and then he heard the sound again saying, more bears, two bears there. Okay, happy now? An adorable, cuddly, wuddly little baby bear named Mr. Fluffy and his mama bear, Stella, who always wore a yellow hat. Now, it happened that Stella and Mr. Fluffy liked like all bears, were especially fond of, and there's Stella and the baby Fluffy, they were especially fond of more bears, of course. And he heard the sound again, more bears. See it on top? The author was just thinking that, the author was thinking that just to keep everybody happy. This story should have a papa bear, whose name, by the way, was Captain Picklehead. Isn't that a funny name for a Captain a Picklehead, for a, a, a papa bear? And here's a picture of another bear, and a bear named Uncle Sheldon, who was bald and loved to play the ukulele. Now, where were we? And here's Sheldon playing the ukulele. Where were we? Oh, yes. Guess what's coming? More bears. The sounds happened again. Stop that. How many bears do you want this story to have anyway? Do you really want to hear about Bobcat Sam, the bear who rode a pony, and Admiral Habersham, the English dancing bear, and Excellent Steve, the bear who just wanted to surf? These are the three bears I just read you about. There's the Admiral, and there's the English dancing bear, and there's the surfing bear. You do? Wow, why didn't you say so? In that case, the author suddenly decided that this story really needed, and what do you think, kids? More bears. Yes, 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 more bears. So the author added Astro Bear, and by the way, who by the way was Bulgarian and always kept a hamster in his pocket. I'll find that in a second. There he is with the hamster in his pocket. 
just in case, and then the author put in three more bears named Lester, Chester, Esther, and Floyd. Wait, that's four. Oh well, four is okay, because after all, the story really needed, and here's Hector, Chester, Esther, and Floyd, the story really needed, guess what, more bears. It needed a bear named Lucky Eddie, who juggled carrots, and a bear named Elbow, who wasn't very smart, and he always wore his underpants on the outside of his regular pants. Isn't that funny? Look what he looks like. And a bear named One, Two, Three, which even the author thought was a strange name for a bear. And since probably wasn't enough, the author added even, and here's a picture of One, Two, Three, playing something like hopscotch. The author added, guess what? More bears. The author added six bears on tiny pink bicycles. Two bears reading comic books. One bear flying across the page in a cape and lederhosen. Those are long socks. Three more bears swinging through trees on vines. A bear in a yellow submarine over here. and several bears making cupcakes, an entire team, and an entire team of firefighting bears running across the page with hoses, ladders, and party balloons. And look at that. He had so many bears. There were bears hanging from the top of the page, you can see here. Bears sleeping in the corners and bears standing on top of other bears. There were so many bears in this story that they couldn't fit all on one page. And wait till you see how crowded it was. These are all the bears stepping and sitting and standing on other bears. It was crowded, too crowded, so crowded that some bears started pushing other bears off the page and arguing which made the author very grumpy. And when authors get grumpy, they start rewriting, changing the story. In fact, this author was so grumpy, he told the bears to leave, and they did. After all, this was the author's story. They walked off the page, they rode off the page, they swung, surfed, danced, climbed, ran, and even somersaulted off the page. And here's all the bears leaving the page of the author's book. At last, here's the author very happy. All the bears were gone and the author smiled. Finally, the author had a story with no bears in it, a lovely story with not a single bear anywhere, just the way the author wanted it. Because you see, the, the author was quite certain that this story should have absolutely more chicken. And guess what happened after that? I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you very much. I'm Melanie Curran and I was in the Marine Corps from 2013 to 2018. I'm going to read Ladybug Girl and Bingo by David Soman and Jackie Davis. This is where we should put the tent, says Lulu. She's excited to be camping and sleeping in her new sleeping bag. Isn't this fun, Bingo? We're going to sleep outside. But Bingo isn't standing by her side like he usually does. He's zigzagging all over the campsite, smelling everything. Suddenly, Bingo stops, puts his nose straight up in the air, and bolts off towards the woods. Papa quickly grabs Bingo by his collar and snaps on a leash. We're in the wild, not in our backyard, Lulu, says Papa. Make sure to hold on to Bingo's leash so he doesn't get lost. Don't worry, says Lulu confidently. Ladybug girl would never let that happen. While her parents and brother are packing and pitching the tent, 
Ladybug Girl and Bingo decide to explore around their campsite. The forest is filled with exciting discoveries. Ladybug Girl and Bingo cast spells with a gnarly old wand. They ride on galloping giant turtles and sip tea with the buttercup fairies in their secret garden. The whole family hikes to a nearby lake. Bingo is pulling so hard that the leash slips through Lulu's fingers. Lulu's brother snatches up the leash. I'll hold him, he says. You're not, you're going to let him get away. No, I won't, says Lulu, taking the leash back from her brother. When they finally arrive at the lake, they rent a canoe. Everyone has to wear life jackets, even Bingo. Lulu thinks that Bingo looks like a brave sea captain. The canoe glides out into the water. Lulu loves the feeling of floating along. When they get out to the middle of the lake, her parents stop using the oars and they drift. It's so quiet that Lulu can hear the clouds moving. It's peaceful and she doesn't have to worry about Bingo running off here. Lulu looks over the side of the canoe. Look, she yells, I see an underwater castle and mermaids. That's just weeds, says her brother. Lulu looks again. Nope, it's definitely a castle for mermaids and probably mer dogs too. Maybe her brother needs glasses. After they return to their canoe, it's time for a picnic lunch. Lulu eats a giant cheese and tomato sandwich and at least 38 blueberries. Bingo has two bowls of kibble. Everything tastes better outside, thanks Lulu. When they finish lunch, Lulu jumps up and asks, do you want to play, Bingo? He pulls her towards the forest. We can play explorers in the jungle. How about we're trying to find a lost unicorn and we have to watch out for tigers? You should stand guard right there, Bingo, Lulu says, hooking the leash over a branch. And I'll climb up this tree to see if I can find the unicorn. Crack! Lulu hears the snap of the branch, and before she can blink, Bingo is racing away with the leash trailing behind him. No, Bingo, she yells as loud as she can, come back. Oh no, Lulu cries, where did Bingo run off to? And what if she can't find him? What if he's gone forever? No. Ladybug Girl says out loud, she knows she will find him, even if she has to look under every leaf in the forest. Ladybug Girl blasts off like a rocket to search for Bingo. She whizzes through a maze of trees, not caring if her wings get snagged on the branches. Bingo, she calls, but he doesn't come. After she leaps over a rushing river and stops beside the humongous boulder, she hears a fam familiar sniffling sound. Ladybug Girl zooms to the other side, and there, rooting in circles around a pine tree, is Bingo! There you are, Bingo, she shouts, flinging her arms around him. I'm so happy I found you. Ladybug Girl stands up and says, let's go back now. She looks around and realizes that she isn't sure how to get back to their campsite. She ran so far to find Bingo that they could be hundreds of miles away. What if they need a helicopter to bring them back? Bingo tries to climb up a big rock. Up here, asks Ladybug Girl. Holding Bingo's leash extra tight, she climbs to the top of the boulder. From up this high, she can see the entire forest. She sees the old wizard tree, and then looking down, she realizes she's standing on the giant turtle rock. Ladybug Girl can see their tent. Ladybug Girl and Bingo run breathlessly back to the campsite. Mama, Papa, guess what? We were searching for a lost unicorn, but then Bingo escaped into the woods, and I chased him forever. And then when I found him, we were both lost in the woods, but then Bingo helped me figure out where we were. And we made it back all by ourselves. You weren't lost, says her brother. You were right over there. We could see your wings the whole time. Ladybug Girl looks in the direction where they came from. It is really far away. Maybe her brother doesn't need glasses after all. Later, after dinner, they toast marshmallows all around the fire. Can you believe we're up so late, Bingo Lulu asks, staring at the stars that cover the whole sky? Wow, there's even stars in the trees, Lulu says. Those aren't stars, her brother says. They're fireflies. Fireflies? You should like them, he says. They're bugs that light up. When it's time to go to sleep, Ladybug Girl wriggles into her new sleeping bag with Bingo. I love you, Bingo, Lulu whispers. And it's been a long day, and Ladybug Girl is a little bit sleepy. But tonight, Firefly, Firefly Girl is up. The end. Hello, my name is Jim Ling. 
I went to Norwich University, came out as a second lieutenant and served in the United States Army for six years. I was a tank platoon leader, a mortar platoon leader, and a company commander. And the book I'm going to read is Dogs. Written by Emily Gravett. I love dogs. Big dogs and small dogs. I love tough dogs and soft dogs. I love dogs that bark and dogs that don't. I love dogs that play and dogs that won't. I love hairy dogs and bald dogs. Stripey dogs and spotty dogs. I love slow dogs and fast dogs. Shabby and chic dogs. I love dogs that are good and dogs that are bad. But the dog that I love best, let's see. is any dog that won't chase me. The end. I hope you enjoyed this book. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ray Sidler. I am, uh, was U.S. Army, 1986 to 1989. I'm going to read David Gets in Trouble, which is by David Shannon. When David gets in trouble, he always says, no, it's not my fault. I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. Do I have to? I forgot. My dog ate my homework. I couldn't help it. I was hungry. But she likes it, pull the cat's tail. It slipped. But dad says it. Excuse me, as he burps. No, it wasn't me. Yes, it was me. I'm sorry. I love you, Mom. Yeah.